Hello patrons, this is Gail. I just thought I would come to you today to let you know that I appreciate every one of you. Uh, you've been a real blessing to me through the last year and now we're starting a new year. And I'm really going to work hard to try to get you your tutorials on time. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but right now with it being winter time, I'm not running as much, so hopefully I'll have time to do this for you. But today's tutorial is something that I uh, found, uh, I think it was in Jewelry Crafts Magazine back in 2005. And it was something that caught my eye. Um, and I've been wanting to try it, but it's always been, you know, I've never had the time to just sit and play. So I'm going to use you today so I can play, and hopefully it'll come out into a nice project that you would like to do. Uh, it's a Bargello project, and I really enjoy it. So let me turn my camera, and I'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is Gail. And today we're going to be working on a Bargello project that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Matter of fact, the article that I read that is inspiring me was in the Jewelry Craft magazine back in 2005. So that shows you how long it's been since I have, uh, that I've been wanting to do this. So what I'm using today, and let me straighten my camera, there we go. What I'm using today is Primo, Bright Green Pearl, and Turquoise, because those are two of my favorite colors. And these are not the colors that were shown in the magazine article, but uh, I just happen to like these colors. And you'll notice I've cut them into three pieces, and one of the pieces is larger than the other. And the reason for that is I'm going to be using this color by itself, and actually, this one, I need a little bit more off of this one. I'm going to be using the, this by itself. And the other two, I'm going to be mixing with white and black to make a shade and a tone. And we will just see, you know, we need three different shades of the same color. So this way, using smaller quantities, when I add other clay to it, these aren't going to be so much larger than the others. But I'm going to go ahead and mix a little bit of black with one of these and a little bit of white with, the, with, another, with the other one. And I'll do that on both of these colors, and then I'll be back. Sorry, before I start mixing, I want to show you, I'm going to keep my proportions the same. So I'm going to start with a square of white, and I'll need two, one for each color, and then a square of black. Now I may cut these blacks in half because I know black is a pretty strong color, but it's easier to recreate what you've done if you keep track of the quantities that you're mixing. So. I'm going to use, this one looks like it's got a little bit more clay to it, so I'm going to add the black to that one, and I'll add the black to this one, and these two I'll add white. So I will add the full square. I may end up having to add more, but I will. I, you don't know till you start mixing. So let me start mixing, and then I'll be back. Okay, I've mixed the green with the white, and as you can see, it really didn't change it a whole lot. So I'm going to add a second square well, maybe a half of a square of white. And you just have to test, depending on your color. Some colors are a little bit more uh, rich in color than others. So I'm going to add another, like a half a square of uh, white, and then I'll be back. Okay, now this is with the one and a half blocks of white, and you can see there's pretty much of a contrast now. So that's what I'm going to use for my lightest color. And this is rolled out to a number two setting on my pasta machine. So let me get a piece of deli wrap out, and I'm going to put this on here. That's my lightest color. I'm just going to protect it. Now I'm going to mix the other part of the green, and I'm going to start with a half a block of black. 
And these, by the way, are rolled out at the thickest setting, if I didn't mention that before. The thickest setting of your pasta machine. So let me slice these into pieces that will go through my machine. And then I will add the one block of black, and then I'll be back. Okay, here it is with half of a square of black, and it did make it darker, but I think I'm going to add the other square so that there will be a definite contrast between this color. So I will be back after I mix the other black. Okay, so here are my three colors of green. I don't know how they show up on your camera, on your screen. They don't look that different on my because of the light, but um, this is the bright green pearl. This is the bright green pearl mixed with black, and it made a beautiful olive type green, and then I ended up adding the other half of that second square to, the, to it to make the light green. So the light green is rolled to a number one. The regular green pearl and the dark green pearl is rolled to a number three. So I'm going to do the same thing with the blue and then I will be back. Okay, I have got my three colors of green and my three colors of blue all blended. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the largest square cutter that I have and let me get a piece of patty paper out and I'm going to cut I'm going to cut two from each just because I've already you know I've got enough clay I'll do two all right that's the lightest and this is like I said at a number three a num number one I'm sorry the lightest color is cut to a number one. I mean rolled to a number one. So then we'll go to the next to the lightest, which is the regular color, and this is rolled to a number three. And I will cut two of these. You can see it, the clay that I used, I've got more than enough from my project. I could probably have used a larger cutter, but this is the largest square cutter I've got. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on top of the light green. Try to line it up as best as you can, but you can trim it. It doesn't really matter. But the, the straighter you can get it now, the less you'll have to trim. It's not too bad. Okay, and then the third color, I'm going to also cut two squares. And lay that on top of this one. easier when I pick it up. And handling it changes the shape a little bit, so they're not going to be exact. But that's my greens. Let me get these out of the way. And now I'll do the same thing with the blue, starting with the lightest. which is rolled to a number one. That's my thickest. Then I'll go to my next color, which is the, the natural color with nothing added to it.
Now you can mix all kinds of colors together. You could, if you don't even, like if I wanted a different color blue than the turquoise, I could have mixed my color. that I like and then after I mix the color that I like then divide it into thirds and do the same thing adding the white and adding the black there's all different thing kinds of things you can do all right so that's the medium color now let's get the dark color put the dark color on top okay so now we're going to start putting it together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lightest color of the blue and put it against the darkest color of the green then on the top of that I'm going to lay the lightest color of the green against the darkest of the blue and then lay the blue on top and I'm going to trim this so that the edges are straight and making sure that there's no air trapped in these layers And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half. Hmm. I'll cut it in half this way. And stack. So we have a nice long stack and just press it together make sure that it gets stuck and you will have to probably trim these ends after you get them stuck good and this is our Bargello cane which is what we're going to use to do our Bargello with How do you do you like those colors together? So I'm going to take this over. I don't have my Lucy slicer handy, so I'm going to take this over to my Lucy slicer and I'm going to slice like very thin sheets of this. I just don't want to mess it up. But I'm going to do very thin sheets and um, then I'll be back. Okay, I've cut my slices, and if you want to see, if none of you have tried the Lucy slicer. I know it's pricey, but look at the first slice that came off of this as I was trying to even it up. I mean, this is paper thin, but I love my Lucy slicer. I'm a terrible cane slicer, and this really helps me. So I have some black that's rolled out on a number four. And I'm going to cut a straight edge first just to knock off any discrepancy that might be there. And then I'm going to cut where this is an eighth of an inch. I'm going to cut maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Or let me, I don't know how thick that is. But I'm going to cut two. Should have powdered my blade before I started. Because believe it or not, I warmed up my room.
and my clay has gotten sticky. So let me get my cornstarch out. Okay, now I really feel like a dummy. I looked all over everywhere for my cornstarch container that has the little bag on it. This is a uh, Wilton, it's for fondant where you would put powdered sugar. But I use it for cornstarch and it was sitting right here in front of me. I was looking all over for it. So as you can see, I have sliced a piece off, which I did a little while ago, and I'm trying to keep this just as wide as the other one, but don't worry if they're not the same thickness, because we can sand this at the, at the end. And what I want to do is put like colors close together. In this case, I've got the green, but I'm going to leave a little space. And I'm laying this on a piece of black that is rolled out to the number four, or maybe, yeah, number four on the pasta machine. And I'm going to try to get these straight because these are going to be the basis for our entire design. Now I put the light colors together and it's going to radiate out. Now we're going to keep cutting the same size slices and I will go ahead and cut a few. but these are all slices and you see I put them on the diagonal well I didn't want to do that I put them on a the diagonal this is just alcohol to take the powder off of here because I want a larger design in the center and there's more clay here I was afraid if I went out this way it wouldn't be enough so I decided to do it on the diagonal but I'm going to stick, every time I do the diagonal, I'm going, every time I put a piece on, I'm always going to put the green in the center. So here I'm going to come right up to that, to that green, and I'm going to come out at an angle. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Let me find one where the green looks more the same thickness. This one's a little, what's thinner on that side. So let me do it on this side. Put it right up next to that green and come down at an angle. And I'm going to put this one right up to this green. and come down at an angle. And then you just keep building on that design. You can take this one and put this green up next to that green, but offset it a little bit. See how I offset this? And same thing over here. I'll offset this. Just one, what I do is one color. Like this green, I started it at the bottom of that green. And then this one, you'll do the same thing, but you see how the design is beginning to build itself. You really won't get the, the total effect until everything is done. 
but I'm going to continue putting these greens down, just offsetting the green. So I'm going to take the next one that I, the next slice, and I'm going to cut this off to make a straight edge, a flat edge rather, not a straight edge. And then I will continue to cut these sixteenth of an inch slices. See, it's really hard to keep these straight. So if you're struggling with it, don't worry, because I'm struggling with it too. And I'll put one over here. All right, so I've got five there. Now I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. Put this up in here. And bring it out at an angle. Bring this one up in here. It just barely fit. Bring that out at an angle. And then you do the same thing on this side. So now I've got three and three on each side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling in. But I'm going to come out this way. Let me see. I've got, it. I've got to look at it. So up here I'm going to come straight out. And this is where these pieces might come in handy except I need green ends. There's a green end. I'm going to... See, one needs to come up here in the middle. And then split that difference there. Now, you don't have to do this complicated a Bargello um, design, but I really like this design. And on this one, what you're going to do is you're going to just add one to either side. Here's two that will come out this way. That's where the ones that I cut off will come in handy. They're already stuck together. Now, do I have two more that are green? And you just fill these in until each section gets filled up. that up in there. Now these ends won't matter unless you make a really big cut out of these. All right, I did it on that one, so I'll do the same thing. Let's see. I did that on the top, so I'll do the same thing up here. I always like to do opposites at the same time so I can keep track of what I'm doing. This one's still a little bit wider. I, this, I just must be a little bit off. I don't know. For some reason this side is really getting to me. But since these will be starting off 
longer I will cut some fresh little pieces okay so this green I am going to wait and save for the end because it's going to be a small one so start with one right in the middle and then build to either side of it Put one on this side And one on this side. And just keep building. If you really don't want to watch. Okay, I had to cut some more slices, which I have done. Let me just trim this off a little bit. Okay, so let me finish. I've got all my slices sliced. As long as I don't dump them in my drawer. But let me finish. This side. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, I've got them all matched up. So I'll do one more over here. And I'll cut this off at the green. And cut this off at the green. But I just need a tiny little piece. go over here and then a not so long piece to go in here this is where the scraps come in handy and then I'll put another one in here because this one for some reason needed more space probably because this is over too far or not far enough but I'm not going to worry about it I'm just going to even them up let me find another little one to go in here and then a very little one Just cut it down to the light green as long as your colors are the same and there's probably room for a little one over there let me see if I have another little piece somewhere that will work this one just has a sliver of blue on the end and I'll just cut that off And put that in there so now we've got that side finished now I just remembered what I was doing now that we've got this done let me set it the way it is in my 
we're going to come out here and just build out this way. So let me show you what I mean. And just use your blade. Oh no, I dropped a piece. And I need all of my all these pieces, I think. But just use your blade to straighten it up because it's got to be straight and up against the other one. And you just go down each side. Whoops, what is that in there? So you'll just go down each side now. Okay, I have filled in about all I can fill in with the pieces that I have. And I'm just going to kind of press these towards the center a little bit. Not that they have to, I'm just doing that because I'd like to close in some of that black space. But some of it can be left behind. And the size of this only needs to be as big as whatever your... Uh, if you're going to make a pendant, whatever your pendant size, excuse me, pendant size will be. So we have a choice to make now. The uh, I have an oval, I mean a teardrop, and I have an oval. Let me get my oval out. That oval isn't big enough, and I'm afraid this one's going to be too big. I have these graduated oval cutters, like the graduated circle cutters. And that one, I believe, is going to be too big. So let me pull out my Sculpey cutters and see how this one looks. I think that's a better size. So I'm going to use my Sculpey oval cutters. Because I think that's a better, this just isn't quite big enough and neck size up is way too big. So I'm going to use the oval. And I'm going to just turn this different ways. Just remember that right here is my center. So I can come out that way. Let me pull it up a little bit so you can help me decide. Let me pull these scraps off of my paper so I can turn my paper. All right, so that would be one possibility. And you have this V coming in at the top and bottom. Or I could turn it this way. And have the have it, you know, like a big cross. I think I like the idea of that looking like a cross. So, let me see if that is where I want it to be. I think that's it. So, I'm just going to press and I'm going to cut See, this is a lot of work. And you pull this off. Now we still have some Bargello here. You could probably, actually, let me see. If I made two smaller cuts, I think that one would be too little. This is the next to the smallest. Just get it somewhere where there's a Bargello design. And we'll make pendant and earrings. Now if I put it there, it gives a V. I'll just cut there and see what happens. And 
then I'll cut over here um, someplace else that looks similar. How about that one? So how about right there? So now I've got an earring, two earrings. Actually, I'm going to take these off of this paper and put it on some patty paper. Now what we're going to do We're going to take some more black and roll it through the pasta machine to a number four setting and we're going to use that to back everything and then we're going to cut a strip to go around the outside. So let me condition this. Okay, so I have got another, some more black rolled out on a number three. I didn't get a very even V on this piece of Bargello, but anyway, I've put my piece on here, and I'm going to just use the black, the same cutter to cut the background. So now we've got a nice clean back for our pendant. And I'm also going to use the same piece to put the earrings. I cut a third one only because I thought maybe I, if it were, if they all three turned out okay, I could make a ring, which is something I've not done in a long time. But I'll do the same thing here, just so that they'll be the same size. Because when you mess with them, it changes the shape a little bit. So this is black cut to a number four. I mean rolled to a number four. So they all have nice clean backs. And then I cut a strip And I will cut a straight edge right there where it starts to get narrower. And I will lay this along the side. Try to cut this about the same thickness as your piece. But if, if you're worried about it, turn it face down and roll this around. Because this is not quite as wide. But doing it this way, it will cover the colored part of your pendant. And you can just cut it off where it meets. And when you turn it over, actually you can, now's a good time to press this and this will kind of even out the um, the front of this make it nice and flat press your seam in and then just rub it with your finger or with a tool I prefer my finger although my fingers are a little warm right now which is unusual since it's very very cold but then you can go around, and this for this I will use a tool. I like to use this little metal tool, sort of like a little spatula on the end. But I like to use that to rub along. And this way I can smooth out any little seam. See like right here where it wasn't quite thick enough. I can use this to smooth these seams.
so that it looks like a nice consistent piece of black clay around it even though I had to fudge a little bit but I'm not going to take your time doing that but you would do that on all three of these pieces Oh, I got a piece of black on my Bargello. No! It's one good thing about this being so nice and thick is you can cut off that little piece. But here's where you can kind of press it until you get it the way you want it. You can texture this if you want. You can texture the back. I can use my little stamp my stamp that I made in my last video GOT 18 but I will finish these seams and then what I would probably do in this case is get out my little tote with all my little things in it. The pieces always fall out. And they get up here in this rim up here and then they fall out. And what I will do is take, let's see, probably a medium sized eye pin, not a head pin, Take a medium size eye pen and let me find my pliers. I'll come down about a quarter of an inch. Let's see, I want it to go in this way. Yeah, go in this way. So I want the bend to come this way and I'll just bend it and then come to the other side and bend that and then I'll cut this off right about there I'll take my blade. Actually, I think I'll take my knife. Of course, I would have smoothed these edges better. But then I would just take this and I would cut down into the top. far enough to fit this in and what will happen is this little curve here when that goes into the clay I didn't cut it down far enough or else I made this too big I'll just hold it together but what will happen when this clay bakes the little bend in it will keep it from um, from coming out. So I'll put this on there. Actually it should have been the other way, but that's alright. I'll put a pretty jump ring on it. I have these beautiful jump rings and I don't use them because they're so big. But if I put this jump ring on it, then I can put it on a uh, pretty necklace. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bake this. I'm going to bake the earrings. I'll bake all three, but um, I don't know, I can't turn my oven on right now because of the heat that's on in the other room. It'll blow a fuse, so I'm not going to be able to finish this just yet. It might be a day or two before I can get it finished, but I wanted you to see my starting point and my Bargello pendant and earrings. Like I said, you can make this any design you want. You can 
fiddle with it a little bit. You can let some of the black show or press it in and not let some of the black show. There's all different things you can do. But I will work with this and if I can get it baked before I can before I need to publish this video, I will certainly show you what I ended up doing. Otherwise, this may be it. So, sorry about that. I uh, I apologize. But I'm just kind of limited right now with things that I can turn on that have heat. And it's because my house is wired kind of weird. It's like every, I've got separate outlets for so many things except my craft room. My craft room is in with the kitchen, the television, the living room, the basement. It's a whole bunch of rooms on one circuit. And it can only take one heating element at a time and my right now my um, heat is on my little heater is on in the living room for the dogs because they need to stay warm but I hope you like this and you can just play with it you can use different colors you could use pink and blue or red and green or I'm gonna have to move this because it's not in the middle but um, it's just a lot of fun, and you can make your bar jello smaller. Instead of cutting an eighth of an inch and then a sixteenth of an inch, you can go down even smaller, but I don't do well with small. I, uh, Like I said, it, it just doesn't work for me. So I hope you enjoyed that. You know, I wonder. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll, uh, so I hope you enjoyed learning how to do Bargello. And there are, like I said, there are simpler designs. You don't have to make anything as complicated as this. I just liked the way this one looked. And I could have done better. But this was my first one. So I guess for a first try, it's not bad. But I'd love to see what you do. So if you end up doing one of these, I would appreciate it if you'd send me a picture, send it to my email address, which is always at the bottom of my videos. Keep getting black on my clay. Okay, I decided to change the way I was doing this. I wasn't happy with that little eye pin in there. So I'm using the same process, but I'm going to put this jump ring in. See, it's a twisted rope. I don't know if it's going to focus or not, but it's really a pretty jump ring. And I'm, this is where it opens up right here. So I'm going to make sure that goes inside. And then just press the clay closed. And press it from the back. Just make sure that it closes around that jump ring. And then you can use your tool to smooth things out, reshape, anything that you need to do. This one's not pulled out quite as much as the other one. But I am going to bake these face down. You see, I did the same thing here. I just sliced and put a jump ring down in there. And then I'll use another jump ring. You get a clean... Actually, I'll use an index card. And I will put this on here. These are the two earrings. Just make sure everything looks the way you want it to look. And then I... I, put, I had a ring uh, blank here, so I just pressed it into the clay, pulled it out, put some liquid clay in, and then put it back. So I will have a ring, two earrings, and a pendant when this is all done. So, like I said, I can't bake anything right now until I turn the heat off in the other room. And as cold as it is right now, it probably won't be for a couple of days. So uh, I apologize for not being able to finish this, but I will show you a picture of it later. So hope you enjoyed this. 
try give it a try try different colors you can even look up bargello in on google and get different designs and you can use that to make your design it doesn't have to be this particular one this one was a little difficult a little harder than i thought it would be so find a simpler pattern it might might help a little bit but anyway i want to thank you so much for being a patron and i will be back soon bye bye